Hi, I'm Lois Powell. And I'm Susan Schuler, And we're here to share tips, tricks, ideas, and resources to help you discover what's your story. Hey, Lois, how are you today? Susan, I'm terrific. I'm all excited. I'm excited for this podcast, too. Something we've been waiting to do for a while. Happy Family History Month. October is Family History Month. People can visit Eastlake Community Library webpage to see what events we're having this month in addition to our podcast. Like an open house on October 28th. Come mm -hmm. and join us. Exactly, exactly. So should we get started with today's guest? We should. Very excited to have a guest today. And that's Terry Correo. And Terry, say hey. Hey, Lois. Hey, Susan. How are you? Welcome. Terry actually came to the library on one of the days I was volunteering looking for help. Um, and she was going to go off and do some family research. She needed a little assistance. And that was back around March of this past year. Um, it kind of took off into quite an adventure. And so I'm going to let Terry give us a brief overview. Okay. Well, thanks, Lois. Uh, uh, I feel so fortunate to have found this uh, jewel of a library and genealogy department. Uh, uh, you all have been so wonderful and so helpful and so uh, supportive and enthusiastic about this adventure I've been on. Um, yes, I came to you because uh, my husband and I were going to be going to Ireland and Scotland for the very first time. This was a, a, a much anticipated trip. It uh, originated uh, out of a, a desire to join this Irish uh, band that's uh, been here in Orlando now for five years, and they were uh, going to be going back to Donegal for their homecoming for the first time in five years. And it was the Byrne brothers, and they were like uh, the dad and three teenage sons, and they all play the traditional Irish instruments and uh, uh, step dancing and so forth. So that was going to be the first eight days of our trip. And I figured while we were there, it was a grand opportunity to do my family genealogy uh, research in Ireland and Scotland, where I have uh, very deep roots. So I uh, uh, really got to work on uh, researching through my DNA uh, all of those uh, family lines. So did you do a lot of preparation ahead of time before going? Uh, I did. I uh, thank, thankfully, because of the DNA uh, results I got from Ancestry, uh, you know, they will take you back to your fifth generation, your uh, fifth great grandfather, grandmother. And so I was able to follow those lines and get some remarkable results. And I was able, especially in Scotland, I found that the majority of them were from this uh, area of Ayrshire, which is south of Glasgow. And I had, I was able to find 26 relatives who were from that area. And wow. I know so it was not really, just ancestors, but relatives, relatives, people that are alive today. Uh, well, they weren't there in, in uh, Ayrshire. They, uh, I found a third cousin who uh, her great grandmother and my great grandfather were brother and sister. And uh, that whole family migrated down uh, to the Birmingham area and her family to uh, Bristol. And she still lives in Bristol to this day. So through the DNA matches, I contacted her. Uh, this was my cousin, my third cousin, Chris. And uh, uh, we decided to get together during this trip while we were going to be in Scotland. They would fly up to Glasgow, we'd meet at the airport. She came with her husband, who was also a tour director, which uh, was really uh, quite helpful. And we rented a car and we drove down to, uh, I might be getting a little bit ahead of the story here, but uh, <laughs> okay. anyway, it was so exciting. We, we uh, uh, when we met at the airport, we gave each other a big hug and I, I said, hiya cuz, I'm so happy to meet you. And her eyes welled up with tears and she said, I, I can't believe it. She says, I have no cousins. Both of my parents uh, were only children. So I can't tell you what this means to me. Uh, so anyway, we hit it off right from the get-go and we piled into the car and uh, traveled down to Ayrshire. And we stayed uh, in the little town where our ancestors uh, were born and raised and stayed overnight. And the next day we uh, explored the area. We found the house where her, uh, uh, her 
great great grandmother had uh, had lived as a wife. Her husband was the blacksmith, and to this day, there's still a little plaque that says Smitty on the outside of the house. Aww. So that was really really great. So that wasn't your original research goal, though, right? Uh, no, my original research goal, th that, that was all the icing on the cake, what happened in Scotland. Uh, my great grandmother, Charlotte Looney, she was called Lottie was her nickname. So her name was Lottie Looney. I can't <laughs> believe it. So Lottie Looney <laughs> seems to have been born in Bristol, England. But three weeks later, uh, her parents took her over to Ireland for her christening uh, in Cork. And with Lois's help, I found her baptismal certificate online at St. Patrick's Church in Cork. And uh, uh, Lois and I, you know, really, you know, analyzed that whole situation and found that the church had a link where you can write to them. Apparently, they get a lot of requests uh, for people doing uh, uh, genealogical, genealogical research. Uh, also, Annie Moore, who was the very first uh, person to go through the gates of Ellis Island, uh, was baptized at that church. So, uh, so that felt very special. Uh, anyhow, we found where uh, Charlotte Looney was uh, baptized and we made an appointment uh, with, the, with the church, uh, the church secretary. She says, come on uh, Sunday just before mass and uh, uh, they'll take you to the back. There was a huge vault back there. Uh, oh, it, it was just so thrilling. They pulled out this big registry of baptisms uh, between Baptisms between 1823 and 1876, something like that, and plumped it on the desk <laughs> and turned the pages. And there was her name in this beautiful calligraphy. It was great. It was really did they great. let you take a photo of that or no? Absolutely. Oh, they did? Absolutely. That's wonderful. They were so uh, generous with their... Uh, and then we stayed uh, for, for uh, the mass, uh, uh, something we haven't done for a while, <laughs> and <laughs> listened to this amazing choir and, uh, uh, and then chatted with them afterwards and uh, spent two, two days in Cork and um, uh, went to visit in the adjoining town of Blarney, which is very close to Cork. Uh, I had another relative there and discovered Blarney is really not only famous for its castle, but it was uh, the home of the Irish linen industry. It was created for the Irish linen uh, industry, and there was a huge village green in the center of town. And uh, this was devoted to laying out linens and bleaching them and drying them. Wow. It was it was beautiful. And the, and the same houses were all around. So historical trip as well as genealogical. Exactly. Wow, that's wonderful. So now this connection to the church where you had a call and make the appointment with the church secretary, mm -hmm. did you do that before you left town or did you do that once you got to Ireland? It was all done online uh, uh, from here, from, from the East Lake Library. Even we, better. Yeah. I think I wrote them uh, right while I was here. That's with, wonderful. With you by my side, Lois. So. And the same with your cousins, you reached out because of your DNA matches and then emailed them. Is that how you reach them? Yes, through Ancestry.com. Uh, you can contact them through a messaging system that they have. So we did that back and forth for a little while. And when we start to feel like pretty confident that we were going to be good friends and, and keep in touch, we switched to WhatsApp, which is a little bit more popular in Europe for uh, communicating. So, so oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Lois. You take it. So that's, I think that was a great start. The, the key tip I'm getting out of this is prepare for it before you go. Yes, very yeah. much so. Get, get prepared, get whatever appointments you can get. Hopefully these people will write you back. Yeah. I've never been quite that lucky. Yeah. You've been very lucky. So I think that's a terrific place to start yeah, your research. Yeah. And I think the more you do here, the less time you're wasting over there. Yep. It's, exactly. It, it's a great way to maximize your time. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I heard you say, Terry, is your goal was to really go back and find the church and the birth certificates. But I thought you had told me you even had one more goal associated with finding out about your family. Oh, I did, Lois. It was <clears throat> something that had been simmering for a while. Um, <clears throat> for years, my family had told me that um, we were related to Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, my main name was Stevenson. And so I grew up uh, just being in love with Robert Louis Stevenson's works and uh, uh, eventually found out about his family of engineers. They built uh, all of the 82 lighthouses around the coast of Scotland. Uh, they were brilliant engineers. Um, 
uh, I can't say that DNA floated down to my family. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, I wanted to either prove or disprove uh, this relationship to Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, so once I got the DNA test results back, I was able to get on those various tangents uh, and couldn't really say I found any immediate connection to Robert Louis Stevenson. But when we got to Edinburgh, uh, I did go to the Writers Museum uh, where they feature the work of uh, uh, Stevenson, uh, Robbie Burns, and uh, Walter Scott. And they were very helpful, giving me some suggestions of some other places to do research in, in Scotland, which will take more time. But I was very appreciative of that. But as of yet, no, I can't say we have any relationship to Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> well, we all hope. So you still yeah. have time. You could yes. maybe prove it or disprove it next year. Or right. Who knows when? There, there is one ray of hope that his uh, maternal grandmother, who was a Smith, uh, may possibly be related. She was from the Ayrshire area in Scotland, where my oh, family was from. See? There's maybe. Be optimistic, right? <laughs> Um, so what I'm curious to know is how many DNA relatives or ancestors, uh, when you did your DNA test and you got your results, how uh -huh. many of those people did you contact Oh, before you went on your trip? Really just the, the one cousin that is in Bristol. That was the only one I could find that was still in Europe. And that was really my major goal in, in doing this research. For years and years, I wanted to find a family connection that was still in Europe. I still wanted to find, you know, some original source of the family in Europe. And uh, when I met Chris, I, I made that connection. I was just so thrilled about that. I'd be thrilled not only to have made the connection, but the fact this person responded to you and you hooked up. My goodness, that's that's just an amazing yeah. story. It's Did you do any other research or any repositories or libraries while you were over there as well? Uh, the one thing we did do is we went to the Irish Immigration Museum, which is a phenomenal interactive building with just incredible displays, uh, things that you can walk through and see how the migration of the Irish people evolved over the years, especially during the potato famine. But I was very excited to find out that they offer a service in genealogical consultation and you can either do it there in person by appointment or online so you can do a half hour an hour 90 minutes and, and do it from your desk here at home uh, in the states or there in person oh that's great so you have a lead to keep doing some research that's exactly. perfect Exactly. I did have some relatives in Sligo that were very strong characters in the family. And uh, when we were on the music tour, we went through Sligo, but there was just no opportunity to stay put and do that research. I, that was my only disappointment in the trip, I think. And what city is the Emigration Center in? Museum? It's in Dublin. It's in Dublin. Right downtown okay. Dublin, uh, right along the uh, the river, Liffey there, uh, right near the Halfpenny Bridge. Oh. <laughs> So while you were in Ireland and Scotland, did you make contact with any on the ground researcher or is this all research you did yourself? No, not really. We didn't do anything in terms of hiring any guides or anything of that sort. We did. I pretty much had all of my research done before I went. Uh, one fun thing I did do is I had found out that my third great grandfather, who was born in 1799, at this Berkshaw Cottage in Ayrshire, uh, I was able to find a picture of the farm on the internet and get an address. And I said, I'm going to write to current occupant and tell them I'm coming and I have ties to Berkshaw Farm. And, you know, can you help me? Can I come see? Can I come visit? Anyway, my husband and I are on the plane. Uh, we left Florida. We were at JFK waiting for our connection to Ireland. And I get an email from the current occupant of Berkshaw <laughs> Farm. I couldn't believe it. Uh, her name was Claudia, and she was a young mom with a, uh, a daughter. And uh, she and her husband had just bought Berkshaw Cottage 
about seven months earlier and she's really into genealogy and she said you couldn't find a better person uh, to come to it, it, amazing story yeah. i mean this doesn't happen to anybody else so. i don't mean to diminish your um genealogy research because you did a lot of work but mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe in the concept of genealogy serendipity mm -hmm. you know and to me finding that woman at the cottage that's it magic. was a, so you actually met her then she came and, and got us. We were uh, staying at the Dumfries house about an hour away uh, from uh, the, her cottage. She came and got us, <laughs> took us back down there, showed us the local church, the graveyard. Uh, we met her little daughter. And this cottage was part of a much bigger farm. Uh, and uh, I think my third great grandfather and his father and his grandfather were all from that same farm. And we were able, it was to, to, to walk the fields and the hills and it was lambing season. So everywhere you went, there was a little bag you know, on, the, <laughs> on the hillside. It was, she, she was just remarkable, this uh, young woman, Claudia. Uh, and she had just retired from the police force. She'd been there for 10 years to pursue her operatic career as a soprano. So uh, she, she was just extraordinary. She was really great. So. I was very indebted to her for all her kindness and her generosity and driving us back and forth. It was amazing. Yeah. So, really okay, is. here's my $64,000 question. Go ahead. You were so lucky doing all of this pre-research, having so much success reaching out to people. As you look back, is there anything you could say, gee, I wish I had before I went, I wish I had studied or researched this? Oh, I, w I wish I had had maybe another year to do more in-depth research and also to really realize that all of these little towns in Ireland have historical societies that I probably could have reached out to. When we drove through Sli Sligo, uh, we couldn't stop, but I saw a little sign that said Sligo Historical Society. So I said, oh my goodness, I could have stopped there or contacted them you know, before we came. So there you go, folks. Your research is never done. Never. And as prepared as you were, it sounds like you could have, in your mind, done more. Always. There's always more work to yeah. be done. The lesson there is to look for your historical town in Ireland and write to the Historical Society now before you plan your trip. So, Terry, this has been fun. I really appreciate your joining us today oh. and uh, telling your story. Yeah. Do you have plans to go back? Oh, I would love to go back and finish up what I couldn't finish. I want to go back to Sligo and find the house where the Odads had their uh, dry goods store. And please tell me you're still in touch with your cousin and Claudia. Oh, yes. I think I persuaded her to come over uh, for a winter visit. So <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Terry. It's been really enlightening. Thank you. Yes, thank it was you. really a joy to share this with you. It's uh, not everybody who likes to listen to these genealogy stories, so oh, I appreciate we it. <laughs> we love to listen and tell genealogy stories. So if you have one, give us a call. We'd love to chat with you too. Just call the East Lake Library. <laughs>